the vegan anarchist and in this video it's going to be about why anti-identity politics also called it poor is cancer on the left or ultimately titled fuck anti id poll or fuck anti-identity politics let's do this Man, you know, with identity politics, well, anti-identity politics has been basically a bandwagon that so many leftists and anarchists and Marxists jumped on. They jumped on that bandwagon. But, but the issue is, where is the bandwagon taking it? With the court, they jump on the bandwagon. But what are they jumping into? You see, many people who are Shanani who are anti-identity politics say, well, focusing on women's issues as well as class struggle and race issues and all those issues are just, it divides people. It, it makes, makes the rich man happy because it divides the working class. That only class matters and Fuck this whole identity. Oh, Black Lives Matter is racist. A lot of them are brutalists. They're class. They're, they basically they have all this. They have this narrative. But the truth is, is that anti-it pullers are not leftists. They're not anarchists. They are half-baked. Reactionaries with leftist economic policies. That's what they are. And here are some, I'm going to give you some arguments why anti impul is, is horrible and should be done away with, and we need anti anti impul. You see, the whole idea of anti-identity politics. The whole idea of anti-impulse is the idea that work is out there is real issues like let's say capitalism and then the, and, and the other ones don't because the material condition because when the revolution happened though it would just wither away because capitalism would cease to exist yada 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 but here's the thing um, cap, uh, here's the thing, many people in the working class, well, let me phrase it this way, Mike Pence, well, Donald Trump the other day, and this give me an example which will lead to the point, made, well, pledge to sign the bill into law that would allow LGBT discrimination among people who are employed and, ha and, and for housing and stuff like that. You know, people who have jobs and are working. Well, chances are, it will, by definition, if you are employed, you do not own that means of production. That, and if you don't own the means of production, but you work it, you are by definition the proleta proletarian, working class, by definition, by definition, but yet it's just identity politics to consider their issues even though they're very fucked. And you know, there's an old phrasing, an injury to one is an injury to all, and that's what a lot of those anti and poll advocates don't understand because they're not leftists. They are Third positions are half-baked reactions with leftist economic views, but socially are, cons are sort of right-wing, you know. They're not leftists. And that's a problem because, like it or not, there are women who are working class, Men who are working class, black working class, gay working class, they come in all different shades of color. And because a white guy 
for a working class guy from let's say Tennessee is going to be completely different from a black working class guy from the deep south. It is going to be different. And, we, and, and even in the same area they're going to be different. The point is, is that when, you, when there's disparities either within the working class, like when women are more likely to be under the poverty line, at any age, you're more likely to be under the poverty line. Or when you consider stats like, yes, one white people have been run or shot by cops, but as a percentage of per capita of blacks and Native Americans beat white people in terms of being murdered, and white people have a statistically, and in many accounts, have actually treated black people and minorities differently and that they're more likely to suffer the death penalty means that anti-impolars employ a one-size-fit-all policy regarding the working class. But they're not homogenous. One size doesn't fit all. The problem is, is that the whole point of being an anarchist and a leftist is to fight for the disadvantaged, for the weak, and, and help them fight for themselves, and if they can't, fight for them. It is not. It is not to say, oh my, my I have it worse than this black guy because this black guy, because white people are suffering, even though the statistics show it otherwise. I you do get, and yes, there are exceptions like the working class and the Rust Belt, but the intersectionality we shall lie to demonize shows that the experiences are not going to be the same. So if the experience is not going to be the same, but when you treat it up, oh, let's erase the distinctions. You are by definition. You, you are, your praxis, rather, sucks. Your praxis sucks. But racism is a product of, the, of classism. So if classism, then so is racism. Well, well, there is truth to that argument. Racism, classism, homophobia, you could consider, and let's take the, yeah, I, I do somewhat agree with that. I don't have a more ear, right? But that's, I, but this, I've been sick to argue and say yes. But that will make it that, that racism, classism, homophobia is, and all this discriminationism is by that definition of bourgeois ideology. What kind of Marxist or anarchist or radical leftist would put a blind eye to bourgeois, uh, bourgeois ideology. It is just pure ideology. Pure bourgeois ideology. In fact, I'll go further. Not only is bourgeois ideology, but, but it, let me think, I have to think, sorry. Not only is bourgeois ideology, but it is also all it also spun off and has a life of its own. Yes, racism came out of the class system that originated in colonial America and in and Europe, but it spun off to its own thing where the working class have internalized it. So you have to combat it. And by making a distinction doesn't it, that cause division isn't a necessary a bad thing when that distinction is necessary. Just like the distinction between the capitalist and the proletariat is necessary, so is the distinction between racism and gender and all that stuff. It is rather bad praxis to not acknowledge that. And it's spun up and now 
it, 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 not only that, but they overlap, and some is forms of oppression, like anti-Semitism actually predates capitalism. In fact, possibly the oldest two or three, beside, well, two beside class struggle of known to man of forms of oppression is speciesism slash anthropocentrism and the oppression of women. Those three are among the oldest. So, so obviously, if you don't understand how these intersect, and all intersectionality is, is the study of how they intersect and how they benefit each other. But, but just saying class conflict and it's all would not solve the problem. During the Spanish Civil War, for example, there were, and women were still discriminated against, and it took a, a group organization whose name was, I can't remember, but translated to free women, had to step up to combat that sexism, and, 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 were, and, the, and the brutal is a manner because of right, it wouldn't have been a thing, but it was a thing. During a brief time of that anarchist society, it didn't win their way, it had to be fought away. Brutalism and manarchism needs to die. Anti-identity politics need to die. We need anti-anti-identity politics. And I'm an SJW because fuck it I am. I am anti-anti-identity politics and so should the left. Fuck anti-anti-politics and... And... And as a... And by the way, as a final... But I didn't even put the... But a Black Lives Matter is equivalent to all right because they both use identity politics. No. The difference is that I'm not the same. That's a false equivalence. Because I know a lot of you like to make that mean. The, it's a false equivalence because number one. Number one. Number one, the old right, the one, the left uses identity politics to fight privilege, to fight oppression. The right, like the old right, especially, uses the uses identity politics to strengthen, to further dominate, to to reinforce the role, to put on steroids. And second of all, if those ideas came from class conflict. By definition, anti-left this I mean leftist identity politics is by definition anti-bourgeois ideology, and the old right is by definition bourgeois ideology. Then that's how a Marxist perspective would be. And this is the vegan anarchist, no meat, no milk, no masters. Freedom for all, freedom for none. Viva the revolution! Fuck anti-id poll! Long live the revolution! Free for all! Including the animals. See ya!